medcram.com. Well, welcome to another medcram.com board vitals question. This question comes from the cardiology and family medicine question banks. 40-year-old male presents to your medical clinic to establish care. He has no known prior medical history and does not take any medications. He complains of occasional shortness of breath on walking more than two blocks. He has never had any chest pain. He has never smoked and denies any alcohol or drug abuse history. He was adopted and does not know anything about his parents or siblings. He takes occasional multivitamins. His vitals in your office are blood pressure 110 over 80, heart rate 90, and he's in no acute distress on physical examination. He has a normal JVD, clear lungs, and a harsh crescendo-decrescendo systolic murmur that begins slightly after S1 and is heard best at the apex and lower left sternal border. ECG is shown below. Which of the following is the best statement to describe further clinical management? A. No further workup is indicated. B. Echocardiogram is indicated, which is the correct choice. C. Start furosemide for diuresis. Or D. Start aspirin and Plavix. Now let's take a look at that ECG. So what's the best answer? Well, the first thing we need to do is kind of go over the question stem and figure out what's going on. Since we're on the ECG, let's talk about that one first. So this is a 12-lead ECG, and I think the biggest thing that you'll notice without going through rate, rhythm, and axis is these very large S waves in V1 and these very large R waves specifically in V5. So if you actually look at these and count them up, you'll notice that the S wave in lead one, V1 actually, is, let's see how long it is. That's about five millimeters, 10 millimeters, 15, 20, 25, almost 30 millimeters S wave in V1. And the R wave in lead V5 is, let's count it, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So the criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy is the S wave in lead V1 plus the R wave in lead V5 is greater together than 35 millimeters. Well, we see it's about 30 in both, so we're about 60 millimeters, which is well past the cutoff for the criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy. So I think that's what we're dealing with here. So let's go back to the question stem and see what else we can pick up. We hear this harsh crescendo, decrescendo systolic murmur that begins slightly after S1 and is heard best at the apex and lower left sternal border. Now this is kind of a classic type of murmur that you would see with something called hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, where you have a subaortic stenosis that is actually very dangerous because these people, if their ventricular size gets small enough and the subaortic stenosis becomes great enough, their cardiac output will fall drastically. So let's talk a little bit more about hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. The other name for this also that you may see is IHSS, which is idiopathic hypertrophic subaortic stenosis. So this is the area that we're talking about here. Here's the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. And you can see here that the septum, I'm drawing this kind of schematically here, is so hypertrophy that it's actually blocking the outflow tract that's going to the aorta. So normally what happens is, is that the sound of a murmur or the amplitude of the murmur is dependent on the amount of blood that's passing through the valve. And so therefore, if the chamber that's upstream from the valve that's creating the murmur is larger, you're going to get a larger sounding murmur. So normally speaking, if you're looking at just regular aortic stenosis, what will make aortic stenosis go up in amplitude will be anything that makes the ventricle larger. That would be squatting, elevating the legs, or a hand grip. Squatting, because when you squat, more blood gets back to the heart because of the pressure, and therefore the left ventricle increases in size, which causes the murmur of aortic stenosis to increase. Elevating the legs causes more blood to come back to the heart. That's going to increase the size of the left ventricle, and it's going to do the same. Now, the way of thinking of this is that what we're actually looking at is we're looking at subaortic stenosis, not aortic stenosis. And so in subaortic stenosis, we're actually looking at the distance right here. 
If this distance gets smaller, the stenosis is going to get worse, and therefore the sound or the amplitude of the subaortic stenosis is going to get worse. Well, that happens when the ventricle becomes smaller. And so the opposite maneuvers are going to make the murmur of subaortic stenosis get larger. And so as a result of that, we see the arrows going in the opposite direction. Okay, so standing is going to make the heart smaller. Therefore, these two are going to come together more. Therefore, the subaortic stenosis is going to become worse. A Valsalva maneuver, where you bear down, causes less venous return, and that causes the left ventricle to get smaller, and therefore subaortic stenosis to get louder. And then finally, nitroglycerin is going to cause vasodilation. That's going to cause the left ventricle to get smaller. And of course, diuresis with Lasix or furosemide is going to go ahead and do that. And all of these things that make the ventricle smaller are all things that could make sudden cardiac death. So these patients who have hypertrophy, which is what we saw on the EKG, and have never had any other kind of intervention. They need to have echocardiography to see whether or not this subaortic stenosis exists because these are people that you don't want doing strenuous exercise because of sudden cardiac death. So again, looking at this EKG, we can clearly see here is a very large S wave and here is a very large R wave. And that's the key to left ventricular hypertrophy. And if we scroll on up and take a look at the actual question, we'll see in the question that echocardiography is indicated and is the correct answer. Why is no further workup indicated? Because if this person goes on to do exercise, he could die from sudden cardiac death. Furosemide, of course, as we talked about, is not a good idea because it's going to make the ventricle smaller and therefore more dangerous. And starting aspirin and Plavix isn't going to have any effect on this portion of the heart. It's just going to prevent thrombosis in the coronary arteries. So clearly the best answer here is echocardiography, which is indicated because this patient's at risk for having hokum. Thank you very much for joining us.